Passau, a city located where two major rivers merge and now experiencing its worst flood disaster in centuries. The waters have begun receding, leaving behind debris and mud, but residents are cleaning up and determined to get back to life as normal. Rubber boots are essential equipment here. Helpers have to trudge through water and mud. Those without boots create makeshift ones. This volunteer has turned a sturdy plastic bag into protective gear. She says all you need to do is tie it around your foot and then around your leg, and that'll keep the mud out. I asked if it works. He says yesterday it held for three or four hours, but today he's tied the bags a little tighter. At this office at Passau University, Carolina Oberländer is coordinating student volunteer efforts. The students are organized and doing what they can. It's nice, she says, that Passau residents see that we're not all lazy students. We also roll up our sleeves. We're residents too. We want life to get back to normal. Students have proven ready to lend a hand. Two to three thousand are helping out every day in Passau. One of the volunteers sent to the banks of the Inn River is Barbara Graf, who's studying to become a teacher. We're lucky our own living quarters aren't affected, she says. Now that the water is gone, it's unbelievable how wrecked and full of mud everything is. But it's uplifting to see everyone helping out. But Passau isn't free of the floodwaters just yet, as I see when I join authorities on patrol. Normally, you would be able to stroll along this promenade here. Now, you couldn't even stand on the spot. Bastian Brauwe is incredulous. He says it's shocking what nature is capable of when you realize how vulnerable you are in spite of technology and flood defenses. There's been a lot of investment here, but in the end, Mother Nature was a meter higher than expected. Passau's location means it's prone to flooding, but never before has it been this bad. The water has even crept up to places previously considered safe. That's been the case for Werner Kraus. He wants to get into his apartment and see just how bad it is. But he can't access it yet. You can't even see the house, he says. It's located down a side street, almost the last house before the spot where the inn and Danube meet. He waves over the water police, but they can't dock. The mud underneath is too deep and currents are dangerous. The most direct way is blocked by piles of sand and mud. Law student Angelika Kramer ought to be studying for her bar exams, but she says there are more important things at the moment. They've been wheeling one load of mud after another out of flooded businesses. She says the disaster is weighing on everyone's minds. Werner Kraus and his wife Hannah Katz are worried about their home, but they're trying to look on the bright side. Disasters always have a positive side, Hannah says. When people show solidarity and stand together, that goes a little way towards helping reduce the devastation. Barbara Graf and other student volunteers have been assigned to help clean out this bar that was completely submerged. All that's left is mud, and it's everywhere. The owner, Raoul Kucher, hadn't even been in business for a year when the flood struck. A firefighter once told him you have to fight water with water. The worst part, the mud, is best cleared with more water. The bar was his hope for the future. He invested all his savings and took out a loan. 
He says without government assistance, he won't be able to pay back the money he still owes the bank. A normal salary wouldn't be enough. Without help, he says he'll be ruined for the next 10 years. The 28-year-old doesn't even want to think about that prospect right now. At the moment, he says he's just grateful that he's not left all alone with the clean-up work. Student volunteer Barbara says Passau is tight-knit. Studying here and taking advantage of the city's offerings, it's only right to show solidarity and help out. Werner Kraus and his wife Hannah Katz want to take stock and get to work. They're still hopeful of getting a ride from the water police. But they're told the mud is nearly two metres deep, to the couple's disbelief. The authorities say it could take another two days until they're able to reach their home. Werner Kraus says apparently it's impossible until the mud has been cleared, all one metre and 80 centimetres of it. The couple are now afraid that their house could be covered in mud too. Werner says that the houses further down towards the river were built for floods, with living quarters elevated above ground level. But theirs is not. They never thought that water could rise so high, so fast. They simply weren't prepared. Sandbags weren't enough to hold back the water, with flood levels reaching a peak of 12 metres 80. Back at the university, Carolina Oberlender is taking calls coming in by the minute via the emergency hotline. She asks what people need. Passau residents have also been using Facebook to announce what help they're looking for or are in a position to give. Carolina says a student just called to ask for help for an elderly neighbour who's lost everything. Five volunteers are being dispatched to help her gather her belongings and to calm her nerves. The student's crisis response has proven effective. They've even put together care packages with food for the volunteers. Students say they pack cheese and sausage sandwiches, fruit and sweets, and that it's hopefully enough for the aid workers. The food has been donated by Passau businesses. The care packages are distributed to crews in the city centre. A firefighter expresses surprise at the quality of the students' goodies and adds that everyone's thankful for them. Even the helpers say thanks in Passau. And there's even dessert. Ice cream vendor Tiziano Damiano is giving out free chocolate ice cream to volunteers. He says ice cream makes people happy, especially chocolate flavour. It boosts hormone levels and makes you smile. That way people's faces shine again like the sun. People are happy when they can eat ice cream and there's no more rain over Passau anymore. Ice cream always helps. Water police continue to patrol and currents remain dangerous. Bastian Brauver has been a member of the Volunteer Water Police Brigade for 20 years, and this is his first major test. It's fun to help, he says, and you gain useful experience. He says it's a good way to spend his leisure time. Another reason everyone's eager to help is that Passau depends on tourism, and it's hoped that visitors will want to return soon. Hannah Katz wants to get into her home at last. She asks if this is the way. Her husband has already managed to gain entry, supposedly by passing through this house. She can't believe the scenes around her. The water is waist high, but luckily she gets some assistance and she's grateful for it.
ist ja der Wahnsinn. It's unbelievable, she says. Ich danke Ihnen von Herzen. Bitte, bitte gerne. <lacht> <laughs> Finally, she reaches her address. The floors are bending, she exclaims. Again, she simply can't comprehend how high the waters were. But she's relieved that all of her patient files in cabinets above are secure. She has a psychiatry practice upstairs. The floor is ruined, but at least her files have been spared. Mein Sofa. The damage could have been worse. The couple were evacuated from this balcony several days ago. Emergency crews rescued them with large boats once the water reached dangerous levels. Now many in Passau are wondering how much their insurance will cover. This school gym should be usable again in a matter of days, but first some 35 centimetres of mud have to be cleared. Barbara Graf is one of the volunteers. It's a different job this time, she says. It's hard work, but not impossible. You stay busy. Building custodian Werner Geier is coordinating the 30 volunteer helpers in his gym. As a Passau native, he's lived through a number of floods. This one, he says, has overwhelmed him. Passau hasn't experienced a flood like this in 500 years, but a robust community spirit has also risen to the challenge.